bonsoir or bonjour, bonjour, no, what type? Yes, <laughs> as at some point in the day. <laughs> uh, we are we are circling uh, eleven o'clock, so that is uh, it's a good time. That is the witch hour for me personally. <laughs> That's when I come alive. <laughs> Oh really? Oh well, that's 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 far more realness right there. <laughs> all right, that's why you can't hear me because the microphone was muted on the main one. Um, that might be on all of them. That's not bad. So we hear you this time. So I'll start that again. Ciao, Colin. Ciao, Bambini. Now my mic is on. Bon. Um, we spent, oh, let's, let's, yeah. <laughs> so we spent like 20 minutes with people who are watching. Uh, we spent 20 minutes beforehand making sure that Colin could be heard uh, because that was that was challenge for episode zero. Uh, yeah, didn't think to look at my microphone and make sure that was switched on. So episode two, looking forward to that. <laughs> no technical issues when we get to episode two. Uh, I personally can't wait for the outtakes of all the intros we've had to do, where we have to like, step back and do it again. Yeah, yeah, we can we can package that as one of like the the premium <laughs> offerings, um, which we should mention. That's a, that's a pretty- yeah, yeah. Board. yeah, yeah. So, um, if you're watching this on the live stream, hello. I've got the chat open, and I'll talk to you in there. But also. Um, if you're not watching it on the live stream, if you're watching the replay, then the store will be open for the merch and for premium members to ruin soup for the sort of big package deals that come with like the signed artwork and the Lenormand course and, and so on. So that's coming up. But um, yeah, how was your week? All right, what did you get up to? Uh, uh, my week was excellent. Uh, this has been the first week where I've kind of been really focusing on design and uh being a being a being a free bitch in a real world so it's been it's been a uh, we're, we're moving on from being a shop boy which is what i was just until very recently uh and getting over the the, the maybe we're going to talk we're going to say three year plus burnout uh that i had tried to uh cure but then a pandemic got in the way uh so yeah it's been a really it has it's been an excellent week for me personally <laughs> what about you yeah, yeah, no, it's been good. Um, frantic with a whole bunch of stuff, but it's been really fun to see some of the sketches which we're about to get um, to yes. of because um, the, the way the episodes work um, for people who are watching is that the first half of each episode is going to be kind of chatting about the previous card. So next week we'll talk about the rider because that's the first card, which is this episode, and then we'll also talk about card number two and think about design challenges. So because the previous episode was zero and it was about look and feel you spent some time which i'm going to do a screen share of now um taking people's feedback and let me just make sure i can do this and talk so that we can hear you uh, myself and i will be talking awesome. again awesome uh, i can see you coming <laughs> through the levels my levels are good um, yeah, guys, we're good to go. <laughs> so what I've done is for people, uh, so you can't see the, the streaming software, Colin, but I have put up an image okay. of the various card backs that you yeah. were working on. Because uh, this is sort of... I've got, I've got you, I've got, I do have the chat and YouTube up, so... I oh, you can see what's on? Up. Sweet. I'm not yeah. just being ignorant, guys. I am, I am looking. I'm looking respectfully. <laughs> All right. Well, um, talk us through it. So... Uh, the we we discussed briefly we didn't really discuss we, we you uh you provided a a card back that you liked uh and that and i just went and i looked at that and then i was like right that's that's we didn't want it to be as uh complicated as that it was one with like the the two tree it was a reversible with uh, yes. two sort of tree life type things with like uh elaborate filigree and very yieldy uh so i had that in mind and then i was working to do what I thought would be something that we could work towards in that direction. So I am just, I just started with like sketch and I always start like on paper. I, I tend to do a, a mix of digital and uh, good old analog, uh, but for, for for graphic elements, for things like this, um, it's better to end uh, with a digital format because you can get that crispness and that, um, you like the, 
the precision and everything's equal in balance, especially with what we're looking for, which is a reversible card back. Yes, um, yeah, because that's the thing that we sort of discovered halfway through the week is we are actually doing two decks, right? Because we're yeah. doing we're doing a full playing card deck because we're going to be doing the insets anyway, and we're also doing the Lenormand deck, right? So what we have here, and, and I think what we're going to do is a reversible, so you can tell them apart because I want them to be the same size. Uh, and so one of them might be white backed and the other one black, kind of like what we see here. Um, but carry on like and oh by the way um for people who are in the chat i just dropped the image that you can see on your screen into the telegram group if you want to zoom in on anything you can do that uh in the telegram group carry on colin so i uh, yeah I, I always like um throw back from an animal i'm working on an, a good old-fashioned uh, a4 page i work uh from from white and then sort of think about what the what the what the colors are going to be so it's uh so i was doing like white and red just because that's that's kind of the the, the vibe that we're going for and the direction of the the, the cards the card fronts uh and it's uh we're, we're giving we're giving you tentacle realness where we're going back to the kraken uh uh so this is and I, we didn't want to I, we were discussing this uh, back and forth we don't want it to be thematic. We don't want it to be too, uh, although we may be ourselves very campy, uh, we don't want it to be a campy deck. Uh, we want yeah, it to be useful, it useful, to, useful to all comers and useful as a professional tool. Exactly. That's, so, so anyone can use it, but I have my eyes set on, on professionals using it. And one yeah. of the, like the first idea was like, well, let's have a, a busy tentacly back, right? Sort of like a kind of classic playing card if you look at the back of a lot of them they are quite busy and then it, it looked it would have looked too ghost town or ghost ride at a carnival fair um, and it's not quite right it, it is it is a little bit lenormand herself but it's not quite right for a professional setting so we need like to serve tentacle without being swamped by it yeah uh elevated drag i believe is the term the hot term that's going around these days and that's what we're kind of aiming for so it's 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 fun but it's not um it's not joke shop and that's kind of that is i think part of the part of the aesthetic of the whole thing possibly that we're, we're we are aiming to produce here <laughs> so what are you leaning towards um i like the idea and maybe i don't know um i like the idea of it being say the playing cards having a black back and the and the Lenormand cards having white or vice versa, um, probably vice versa actually, uh, and them having a sort of mirror image of the design, kind of like the two middle-ish ones, like the, the second and third from the left. Um, what are your thoughts? Like, you're the one who's designing it. What are your feelings about which direction you want to go next? And people in the chat as well, what do you think to... Um, I think it's more normal for playing cards to have a white back. So I would probably stick to them having the white and the Lenormand's being black. But do you, do we like that exact expression of the colours? Or, for instance, um, the second from the left, I think, needs some black in it. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, well, that's the... So from the, from the example that you provided... Uh, the next step is to kind of develop, I think, a more certain kind of border situation. So you do have like a balance of, you do, you will have a balance of line and color and or black and white or wh whichever we kind of land on. So there is, there is, this is a, this is a, a project in motion. And I would imagine as the deck pro progresses, as we evolve it, there will be elements that I would like to add from what we do with the the front cards, the front of the cards, uh, into like the into the into the card backs, because although we don't want matchy matchy, I am a fan of uh, I'm a fan of synergy. So I would like I would like the fronts and the backs of each deck to kind of have some kind of relationship. I get it. Genetic relationship. Yeah, you know, it doesn't have to be the same. It doesn't have to be the inverted. But I would like them to have a sensibility that they are like sharing. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, no, that's cool. That's a that's a good point. Um, someone, by the way, if you're 
chatting in the Telegram group, the best place to do it right now is on YouTube. Um, someone brought up, which again comes back to the, the the ghost town or ghost ride at a carnival fair thing. Someone said, why not make the Chaos Star a um, ship's wheel? And we actually started there and it did look to... Um, office Christmas party themed <laughs> thing. Like it just, it doesn't quite. Tensile all over it. <laughs> it sounds great at first, but then you realize, what is this? Like a, a seafood restaurant off the highway. Like yeah. um, it's the sort of thing you'd see on the wall somewhere that serves six ninety nine unlimited shrimp, right? And so it's not quite right. Um, again, yeah. we want to hint at it, which I believe oh. we do because the KO Star sort of hints at that and also at a kind of very Captain Jack style yeah. compass. So it, yeah. it's again, it's there. It's there elegantly. It's not a a lime green gimp suit with an inflatable alien <laughs> attached to the back of it, as we unfortunately seem to see in uh, in as we get down to the final few girls in RuPaul's Drag Race. We don't need to solve this one. Is actually funnily enough, the, the sort of the the episode zero creative project is in fact ongoing until the end of the deck, right? Because yeah. we just need to get its approximate feel so that we can move through the cards. But as we go through the journey of moving through the cards one by one, we'll learn and discover what the Fortune's Full deck actually is. And, and that will feed back into the overall. So we're just here at like at a super macro level to kind of agree we want so we, we, we now have two things that we agree on, which is we want the playing cards and the Lenormand cards to have different backs that speak to each other, but also individually speak to their own fronts. So we, yes. we're, kind, we're kind of there with it. And, and it's most likely going to be one of them is black and the other one is white. And then there will be um, uh, white and red and black on each of them otherwise, right? So we're actually, and this is interesting because it's, it's fairly uncommon. And it's, it's probably worth working out if it's even print possible. I assume it is. Um, it's fairly uncommon to have a three-color back to, to a playing card, right? It, it tends to just be a busy blue pattern and white or something. But I... Um, and we may end up going down that route. It may actually be, well, one of them's white and red and one of them's black and red. Who knows? Yeah. Um, but I, I, at the moment, I think... Because like, I like the middle one. I just think, uh, and obviously, because as you said, this is just an overall sketch and design. I think it's going to be better with some white in it as well. Um, or more specifically, yeah, the white one's going to be better with some black. Exactly. Um, but I, I, yeah, I mean, I, yeah. Of these, do you like the sort of porthole tentacle middle ones? Or do you like the um, skull and tentacle? Do you like that for something? <laughs> My, my, that, my initial, uh, and this is what happened. This is what, this is what I enjoy about like a collaboration is that each person is, tries to push their own perversions. Right. So I, I throw in a skull because I just like to do it. I like to draw a skull. Right. Uh, so I, that was the initial, that was the initial suggestion. And then we, we went it down and we make something else. At first I was like, oh, we're not doing that. Skulls are too theatrical. It's too, um, it's, uh, it's too chintzy. Um, and now, and now that I'm kind of developed in this direction, I kind of like that. So it's definitely the it's definitely the, the correct call to drop, uh, to drop the to drop the, the BFE and uh, and perfor performance arts, if you will. Mm. Uh, absolutely, it's a uh, and that is kind of a porthole. Uh, and there is that kind of we like this, we like these tentacles. And to be honest, I spent so long drawing tentacles and looking at tentacles. It's nice to get to use them in the deck. True. Uh, so that's that's like I feel like I, I feel like I'm, I feel like I could just draw like I could just draw you a, 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 a an octopus tentacle from memory, which no illustrator should be able to see. <laughs> but that's what I, like that that is oh, well. that is where I am at. And I think I'm going to get that each week. Like this week, we've got you know the writer, so I, I'm going to get very uh, very intimate with the with horse and and thinking yeah. about horses and. And, uh, and it's, I enjoy that kind of element. Uh, but yeah, definitely, I am in. I'm in team. Team the the, the middle one, the black yeah. one, and the, the black and white one. Cool. Uh, just as 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 what we were talking about last episode of boiled down design, where we're, we're getting to like just the very like the we're getting to the line work, which is you know a, as an illustrator, I should hope that I would be enjoying to do. Yeah. Um, and it's uh, you. You when when I when I shot you this, uh, you were like, yeah, this is you know, 
Madame Lenormand is in the house and we're giving you, we're giving you that kind of, it's theatrics, but it's not capital T theatrics. It's we're giving you a sense of the game. Yeah. We're not performing it for you. So uh, yeah, definitely. I would say the the middle, uh, we're in the right direction, I feel. Cool. Um, And I was just sort of thinking about the, um, well, well, you're back in the room, just sort of thinking about the skulls. Uh, It could be that something like that is the Ace of Spades. So it actually could go in the front of one of the cards because I like the skull tentacle combination. I think it's probably too much as a card back, but maybe it's the Ace mm. of Spades, right? I might get, I might yet get my way then. I might get, I might sneak them in somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it looks good. It's just, I it doesn't feel like it belongs on the back of the card. So it might be the Ace of Spades. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Like it looks like where where we went looks. It looks, it looks. I could imagine this in my hand where we've ended up, and that's kind of, or in the back. Like I get, that's where we kind of need to be with it. Yeah, some actual, some good. Most people are on board with this. Um, some people are, and it's it's good as well. Some people are liking the sort of sketch card on um, the right. Is and Jason's got is the idea that the playing card inset, as it shows up in the Lenormand deck, will be exactly what gets blown up to full size for the playing card deck. That is indeed the idea for now. Um, because if we're going to have to, and by, this is the royal we, if Colin is going to have to uh, custom design a playing card deck for 36 cards, um, most of that work is at the beginning, right? Like it's deciding what you want, um, the hearts, or if we do um, cups or whatever, right? It's deciding what you want that suit to look like. So if you do that for most of the, or at least half the cards, it's like, well, we might as well, do them for all of it, and it's absolutely to bring. It's absolutely to bring the uh, the Lenormand reading energy back where it belongs, which is in that sort of playing card fortune telling lineage. <laughs> so it, it's it's almost part of the ceremony of bringing the cards to life is that they have to have an actual playing card that the inset points to. Um, so yes, that's that's absolutely the idea. It's why um, obviously the the top tier deck. The top tier, the 36 um, sort of premium packages will get both. Um, then the other two, Lenormand only ones won't, but you will be able to buy them separately um, when the project is done. So that's definitely the case. Um, so the design of the in- insets has to work tiny. Correct. Um, it does. Uh, and that's, again, that's something for Colin. <laughs> but yeah, interestingly, that's, uh... We were talking, That's let's do uh, this. Um, I'm going to try and make sure I can hear you again. Uh, screen share. Right. So I'm back on the um, Pinterest page uh, for people who are watching along. And let me just scroll down. And we're back on the Pinterest page because we need to talk about the rider. But on the way in, what we were chatting about before we hit, we went live was where we think the insets will go. And Jason's question um, prompted that. I am leaning towards, if you can see the um, the furthest card along the top level, um, which is the rider, I'm actually leaning towards, I quite like the inset being top center. But what are, what are people in the chat's thoughts and what are your thoughts, Colin? Uh, hold on a sec. Yes, there we go. Uh... I, I like the I like I like a central I, I like a central focus. It makes it easier to, or it gives you it kind of gives you more of a when you're designing the actual, the actual card, the content of the card. It gives just having one central focus uh, frees up a lot of, a lot of focus and placement for the the action. For, so if it was the rider, if we have a, a central inset, then necessarily you can play around with the fact the writer doesn't need to be in the center it doesn't agree like you can balance yeah. it you know what i mean whereas if you other- have two you just have if you're there or there if you're on the left or the right then you kind of have to play to that in terms of the motion and the what all the line work basically has to to play with that so if it's in the center i think there's a there's more freedom there essentially to to have fun with with the actual content of the card. Agreed. Whereas, because if you look at some of the other ones, um, one, again, you have modern decks that don't even fucking include <laughs> them, which we, we were chatting. That's and we might as well, we might as well yes. spill the tea. It's like, other than Ryan's deck, which I use on a daily basis, it's you asked like, are there any good modern Lenormand decks? 
and probably oh, my, not. My brief, <laughs> in my brief, uh, in my brief research, I would, I would hazard to say that no, there are not. Uh, Ryan Zick has like a sensibility to it, and I like the kind of the sketchiness and this. There's, I'll, I enjoy that, so it kind of works. But there's a lot, like there is a lot out, I don't, and it's the same with tarot decks. There's a lot that are beautiful and perhaps maybe not useful. And then there's a lot that are deeply, 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 disturbingly, disgustingly ugly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just, and, just. and there doesn't, and, and then there are ones that are useful, you know, and there doesn't seem to be a consideration for both aspects of it. But that is perhaps where we come in as a benefit. We've got you kind of gain, you're, you're at the helm essentially if we excuse um, the, uh, yeah, if we excuse the part. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, where so we have like two we have two people that kind of know what they're doing and their and their kind of aspects, so that might play well for us. It hasn't seemed to play uh, particularly well for anyone else that's that's been trying. Uh, it's it's a, a baffle. Bad design is baffling to me because if you're expecting people to pay good money for something, a it has to be useful. B it has to it has to look like it's worth the investment. And this is also a time investment. Good. Yeah. Um, this is, this is to, 36 weeks from now. And then obviously yeah, we have to. This like, is, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a time investment for A, the creators, B, the users. Like this is, why would you fuck about with anything below mediocre it is? is uh, uh, just, I mean, flabbergasted. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, that's, so, not say, that's not to say anyone's artistry is invalid or bad, but. No, no, no. but like, of, there's a reason we like. Wrong. There's a reason we're doing this project. Like, Lenormand herself and the cards need need a a, uh, a contemporary reboot that isn't shaming. Like, it needs a Battlestar yeah. Galactica reboot. It needs to be good. Oh God, um, don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> so I th I'm kind of leaning to it. There's been a couple of ch a few things which I think in the chat that are, are worth mentioning. I'm leaning towards center right. Uh, top center rather a case can be made and it's not that we would rule it out and that's because a big part of the project is itself to um bring centrality back to the role of the insets in in a yeah. fortune telling session anyway so if you look at and i think it's a bit gimmicky to have them somewhere different each time or kind of like almost so the one in the middle there gimmicky um mm. Now that said, and I hate. Can I just say I hate, hate. I'm assuming the person that made this is dead. I hate that there's a description on the card. Oh, what, that is jail. Go straight to jail. That is jail. I, <laughs> jail. <laughs> jail. <laughs> hate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it. this, yeah, uh, this, this person is long dead for sure. Um, yeah, Good. I wonder why I did that. Um, I wonder why I lost my. Um, Back to the board, please. There we go. Anyway, back. Sorry about that. Um, don't know why it does that. Right. Uh, so I am leaning towards um, top center. But one thing we do need to say, and I'll I'll risk losing the whole um, board again, is it doesn't necessarily need to be as demarcated out from what's going on in the rest of the card as this one is right so and i'm not saying yeah, make totally, it borderless 100%. um but yeah. it might be it might be we'll certainly try it borderless right because at the moment yeah. this is great at centering it um mm. but it it's still because it's old timey as well it's it's a clunky design and there's jason why do yeah. people put that much text on cards why do you put any text <laughs> on cards jail <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, to uh, and integrate, I am I, one hundred percent willing to toy about with integrating that in some way to the to the, to the to the main illustration. Also, someone was talking about uh, like you know we're we're, we're drawing small for, we're drawing for a small de deck, and if the inset insects will be even smaller. The the insects for me will be they'll be created as vectors vectors so there's going to be like a print process where we're like testing things as we go. Uh, but also it just means that things aren't like, if, uh, the, the insets aren't going to, insets aren't going to lose their quality as, as we, as they scale down and scale up. So that's like, that's not an issue to, to concern ourselves with. No, sure. Um, but yeah, definitely. I've, I've got like 
there is there's there's ways and means of integrating that where there isn't just a rectangle in the middle of your you know card that I think I, I think that could be very interesting, especially uh, you, there's there's scope to play around week to, uh, card to card, week to week, uh, with how that would integrate with it could be unique to the individual card, and then you yeah. can make a separate inset. You know, there's 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 a world of design uh, design fun to be had essentially nice. uh, that doesn't end up looking like a dog's goddamn dinner, and then that's 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 something to <laughs> something to look forward to, guys. Yeah, absolutely. Now. Um, we should, if, if there's not anything to kind of talk about from overall design, we should officially begin with card number one. What do you think? Let's, let's shall. All right. Are you much of, oh, that's the wrong one. Are you much of a horse girl, babe? Uh, famously, the, this past year, uh, very anti-horse. <laughs> Having nearly been trampled to death by a team of horses last week. I'm going to say last uh, last autumn. Uh, I don't actually hold any bias against them. They're just doing what they do. They are horses. Uh, but I, I definitely have, a, we'll call it a newfound respect at, for a horse that, than just looking at pretty pictures of, uh, you, know, at, like, you know, anatomically beautifully drawn horses. Uh, I'm scared of them. I'm not going to lie. I am scared of horses now. <laughs> so, yeah, that's where I am uh, personally. <laughs> Nice. Um, so it'll be an interesting, yeah. Maybe, maybe it'll be a also, trauma, re- trauma release yeah, challenge. Well, there's, there's a from I remember from high school when they made you read poetry, uh, the, the poem The Horses, and it was about the end of the world. It was like, so I have like a memory of there is this. <laughs> so you actually associate horses, to, yeah. You associate horses with the apocalypse. Tidy, I'm into it because here we are. I'm gonna have to. I'm going to have to like separate myself from that a little to, to get on with the job here. <laughs> what about you? Um, definitely not horse much girl. of a horse girl. Um, so the rider is like an interesting card. Um, it, and we were talking about it beforehand. Uh, for me, and not just me, but just in general, um, the rider is the twink. Um Amongst yes. other things. So it, it's traditional meaning, and this is why I think it was there from the beginning. This is a take, bear in mind. So it is someone arriving with a message. So when the card shows up, because of the way the language of Lenormand works is you don't pull one card. So if you get, like, um, if you get rider and mice, um, you have, like, a bill coming, right? Um, like, oh, I didn't pay this bill or there was a bill I was not expecting because mice is, is money or wealth removed from you and rider is a rival, which is why it's the first one. But the thing is, there is already the letter. So whilst the traditional association with the rider is indeed um, a rival, it is also the twink. Um, and, and I mean that in, and that's certainly how it shows up in the readings I do for me and other people and what have you, because it can be in, in fortune telling situations in same sex partnerships, male or female, rather than going man, woman, significators, although they can be used anyway. Uh, very often it can be the other woman if the other woman is a male, um, or it can be same sex relationships. It can be literally, and I'm thinking of my friend Hugh's podcast, uh, Bad Gays podcast it can be like evil twink energy as well so uh there's <laughs> the, this card actually has to do a lot of heavy lifting uh it's it's one of the cards like mice is quite simple there is what the mice are and then there is um that, that's basically it right but the rider has to be a rival and why i think it subtly is supposed to be twink from the very beginning is that it's inset if we go back to the screen share is lots of hearts so it's nine of hearts it's actually a fulfillment of heart's desire and you think about it in the sense of a woman sitting in the stand somewhere in i actually used to call this the horse triangle out where like sir elton john and the queen live in that like reading slough windsor it's really horsey there right um so like you're at some horse event you're i don't know the Duchess of Cambridge before she became that, and you see some guy on a horse at a polo match, and it's like, hello. Um, it has that energy, and I think that's there in the in the inset, right? So what are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, totally. Uh, we haven't 
pre haven't discussed it a little bit um, because the goal is not to have too set out of an idea or a design before we start with the episode because I don't want to be I don't uh, my, my 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 process for this project is not to be at odds with what everyone else is saying so I've genuinely not put a pen to paper to think about this but I have kind of fantasize about it a little so yeah definitely uh, i'm thinking like rachel vice and the favorite this like uh dark handsome but it's uh as it's a feminine masculine uh energy uh yeah. there's a scene in that which uh, i was very uh very cognac up shall we say uh so there is scenes where she's riding in it and i'm just like sex like that's an awakening for me like there is definitely like so i would I am envisioning, envisioning that kind of energy, uh, like Gentleman Jack, kind of definitely. Uh, we're, 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 we're ACDC here. It's, it's a good call, I think. <laughs> yeah. And one of the, the closest I found, because I do want it to have, and I'm going um, to tell you my um, French story that is associated with it, because I you had the connection to the Norman um, last episode. This episode, I have, and I don't mean the connection to the Twink. That's that's for when we do that's for when we do the Patreon episodes and we're both drunk, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I do think other people have picked up on that. So the modern card that comes closest to some of the energy I want is, and again, it's a, an example of a bad modern card, but it's the um, Under the Roses deck, which I've got screenshot now, because that is a gender non-specific cute twink. And yes. um, so, someone was asking what, to, uh, some two people have asked what is twink. That's amazing. Um, yeah. So guys, gals and girls, that is a young gay gentleman or gentlewoman uh it, it's uh just think uh I, I, you're in your 20s uh and everyone wants pc that's that's what a twink is that's that's essentially the energy yeah um we, we can all relate regardless of sexuality to what that is so, yeah um jason mentioned something which is also in the nine of hearts but because the writer is an arrival or news card it is it puts one in a relation to distance so as you had a kind of place-based synchromistic connection to um, that bitch, Madame Lenormand herself, <laughs> I have one this week for the writer. And I'm going to, I told you before, but I'll tell everyone this story. Um, the first white woman to ever set foot on Tasmania in the year 1792 was named Marie Louise Victoire Girardin. Now she wasn't known as that when she came to Tasmania. She was part of Bruni Dontricasto's scientific um, expedition. And so a few miles from me, down maybe about a 45-minute drive south, where all roads end, the, the southernmost point you can get by vehicle in Australia is a place called Recherche Bay. And that's where uh, Marie-Louise stepped ashore off the boat called the Recherche, right? So it's like next stop Antarctica, edge of the world stuff. Now, Marie-Louise at the time, was known as Louis. She was uh, Louis Girardin rather than Marie-Louise. And the story behind this, so the first white woman to set foot in Tasmania was also the first person to ever have a duel in Tasmania. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, she was pretending to be a man. She was pretending to be Louis Girardin on this scientific expedition. The story as to why is interesting and very Lenormand. And the funny thing is, if it's the 1790s, she would have known who Madame Lenormand was. Apparently, she had something to do... She lived in Versailles. That's where her family was. Not the palace, but like the area. Um, but that does rather suggest that her family was wealthy. Anyway, there's some scandal where she was somehow involved in the dissolution of her husband's business, possibly because she had at least one child with his business partner. So um, as Rear Admiral Bruni Dontracasto was getting ready with his two ships to come to Australia and do that expedition and what have you, he received a letter from Monsieur Girardin, presumably Marie-Louise's father, commending to him... Louis Girardin, his son. So from the outset, it appears that in order to get Marie-Louise away from the scandal, Bruni Dantecaster probably knew from the very beginning that Marie-Louise, that Louis was in fact Marie-Louise. 
But nevertheless, he's like, sure, Louis, you're wel welcome aboard. And the thing is, he didn't, she didn't come aboard as a cabin boy or anyone's lover or anything like that. She had her own um, room. Uh, on the boat so she didn't not that the French in the 18th century did much showering aboard a ship but it meant that she didn't have to be in a be naked in front of other crew members right she was effectively a surgeon so she came aboard as part of a scientific expedition Louis Girardin was was part of the surgical team so uh that's so Bruni Dondricastel obviously did a favor for what I suspect was a high-born family because that's how predator classes work <clears throat> And here she is in southern, well, the edge of the world. Like, this is like going to Mars, right? To get to southern Tasmania from France. Uh, and the duel ha happens. And it happens this way. Apparently, one of the crew members was teasing Louis, um, saying, you're not actually a man, though. You're a woman. Why don't you just admit it? And she would have none of it. She cut a bitch. She got a kitchen knife and slashed this guy's arm who was accusing her of being a woman. <laughs> and he demanded satisfaction, as you do in 1792, right? And so they, even though, and I find this fascinating, he thinks Louis Girardin, his crewmate, his shipmate anyway, is a woman. And despite that, he's like, oh, you cut my arm. I demand satisfaction. And he was going to shoot her. Anyway, so the duel happens. She gets shot in the arm. So she survives. I don't know if she shot the guy who she slashed. Uh, we, I don't actually know if he died. We couldn't tell from the, the records. So um, Marie Louise went into a duel. That's how, how much she was going to stick to being Louis Girardin here at the edge of the world. Where it gets even more exciting um, towards the end of her life. So this is actually only a few months later. She takes up with a member of the Dutch East India Company and has like a torrid affair while Holland and France are at war. So she just can't seem to stay away from trouble, which I like. Uh, and she was actually the last person on the recherche because when the recherche was sort of um, up loading off uh, people onto other boats and so on. They needed someone to stay on board to watch it. So she was kind of the last person to to leave Bruni Dontecasto's famous boat. And because she was the last one, she took the stateroom. For the time that she was there basically being the security guard for the boat, she's like, well, I'm going to stay in the captain's room, <laughs> which is awesome. Uh, and coming back to the love affair, she died of dysentery within a week of her Dutch lover somewhere here in the South Pacific. So there is a little, and it's misspelled, and it just says Girardin, doesn't say Marie-Louise or Louis, but there is an, in a cenotaph in the town south of me called Dover, it, there's a little name uh, that is, that is Marie-Louise, well, it's Girardin, but it is either Louis or Marie-Louise Girardin. And this story, Thanks. and I'm going to, like, for people listening to this, I will go and take a picture of her name on the cenotaph and share it in the Telegram group sometime this week. But this woman is the energy I want for the Ryder card. I want it to look like Louis Girardin, but I want us to know it's Marie-Louise Girardin. So I want it to kind of have, um, and, and, and the, the sort of woman that will not just, is not just somewhere distant, but is, is a writer, is an adventurer, is, is going places. Like she, she, she went further than, um, literally any other Frenchman of her time. You can't get further. <laughs> you can't get further than southern Tasmania, right? It's not like they went to Antarctica. So that's incredible. And and it's absolutely that energy is um, and and that uh, multi gender sexual appeal and and pull is there, I think, in the Ryder card. So that's that's apparently eighteenth century French women just do it right, Colin. <laughs> uh yes uh, yeah that, uh, arrival that is arrival from a distance like letter like she 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 was embodying that whilst being in a different kind of body to do it that's very interesting i think yeah definitely 100 <laughs> percent. awesome awesome so we're gonna do like a yeah like a cross-dressing french adventurous rider um Let's do, do some specifics on it, though, because... And it's, actually, I'm going to come back to it. I don't... It's another thing I don't hate about the Under the Roses Rider card. Let me just move back through. <clears throat> another thing I don't hate about this is... It, it, I think it has that um, gender non-specific sexual appeal. 
And the, uh, this is interesting, right? So another way that the writer has to do heavy lifting as a card is there is adults there is the man and the woman and there is the child card and just like the jack has to in playing card readings there's a sort of 25 year age range from about 15 to like mid 30s that the writer has to stand in for right so it actually has to do a lot of heavy lifting that's one of the reasons i want it to be um, I don't want to, we don't want to make a show of it being gender non-specific in the same way this is. Like this writer could be a woman pretending to be a man in the sense that, um, yeah, it, and and it has to do a lot of heavy lifting because it needs to be men and women or, or people of all genders from the age of about 15 to 35. Uh, and so it's it's quite a challenging one to uh, to put in place. What I like about this is the outfit, but the, the trouble with, what well, even the trouble, the challenge with the writer for you, Colin, is um, right away we have to work out, I know I said timeless elegance and I stick to it. Mm. Right away we have to work out, does this deck have a time period? And that's one for the chat as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that will not be a challenge. That will be a delight for me because that is, whilst thinking about historical uh, people who would have had, you know, a specific costume of the time, um, there is, and the reason I think why your writer is, can be perceived as, as a kind of multi-dimensional sexual person is this is a, this is a twink, which is, you know, could be anything. Um, but the, the, the structure of the clothing of the writer of specifically of that time, like it's very, it's very firm and it's very kind of, you know, we're very, uh, formal, even though you're doing something that requires, like it wasn't a comfortable experience to be no. a writer. Like to do anything, like to be a writer was, uh, you were you had to know how to ride a horse and you had to know how to inhabit the clothing, and that's very interesting to me. And that can I, I can see a hundred thousand ways where we could transport that to to, the, to language that isn't just like 17th century, 18th century, whatever. Uh, definitely, like. I, I'm just I, I'm just seeing like Jean Paul Gaultier like Fifth Element like there is a hundred and one ways to kind of yeah. dissect this so it's gonna be a fun week for me <laughs> yeah yeah because uh, I I don't know I, I like the what's interesting about the Under the Roses card that we just shared is and I keep coming back to the Duchess of Cambridge but like she's from horse folk right and, and if she you look works. yes. She has the she has the queen of the horse girl like that. Is yeah, to be, that's now, to be and, and if you look at what she wears, or even and a, a better example because I adore her is Helena Bonham Carter when she's hanging out with her Tories in the Cotswolds. Um, <laughs> is if you look at what they wear, if you look at the kind of brands um, and like the Wellington boots and what have you, it's twenty first century, but it kind of looks like the Under the Roses twink card, right? And for me, I, I want to start there. It's almost like kicking the can down the road of the time period, right? Because I want the writer to look like someone who went to, not dressed for the Henley Regatta, but the kind of person who goes to Henley Regatta. Like they're in that West of London horse triangle and they wear yeah. those kind of clothing. So it's, um, it's contemporary, but rich. <laughs> that, that's my that's first that. thought. I like I liked the Jean-Paul Gaultier angle and yeah. i'm happy to look at several executions of it but some of the things it seems to be people kind of want it to be a bit old timey um alan mark yeah, is, going, is this an english deck and yeah. american english or french or multicultural definitely multicultural my, my first vision of it in my head was that i wanted it to be almost like the invisibles being quite global um so that yeah. each of the sort of suits was associated with the country but i couldn't get that to work and that found it that felt quite gimmicky so um mm. It's it's neither well it's a it's a uh, it's a British Australian deck I guess a Scottish Australian deck even um, so but definitely very international I do think because we are centering the spirit of Lenormand there will be um, a French accent on it for sure right yeah, yeah um, I like the idea of a high fantasy feel there's people like landing on nineteenth century. Um, I don't know. Like, I'm not sure. I like that period vibe, but like they're time traveling to now is one way to describe it. Exactly. So it's almost like, and this is quite true. It's almost like ghosts of the past 
mm-hmm. um, in 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 the real world. And I don't mean that I want like an an eighteen fifties rider on a contemporary street, but again, because it has to be in a a, a fortune a professional fortune telling setting. Um, it needs to be, and this is why I said timeless, like a wedding dress. It needs to be timeless, and and I think we can kick the can down the road by making it look like one of the Duchess of Cambridge's friends from university. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's a, well, that's the the language of clothing, as uh, especially practical clothing for you know, jobs that think like if you're a horse rider. Uh, definitely there is uh, that's that speaks that has a lot of accents so that is something that will be interesting to kind of look at um, yeah. and to play with I think definitely this, people are vibing on the yeah so the past is back again it is it's it is uh, so we're in that moment uh, and we're in that moment astrologically Colin uh, Austin and I talk about it every time he comes on the show which is and and we're we're experiencing and are being haunted by the consequences of the last few centuries of how we have operated, and I, the deck doesn't need to beat people over their head with the uh, with moralizing, but it does need to show up for the fact that we are um, haunted by the inertia of our behaviors, and that's true in life, but that's true for this moment. And funnily enough, because Ryan asked way back in the chat why why the tentacles and, and whatever, and it's because of the Kraken. But Fortune's Fools is, of course, a reference to um, Shakespeare, but it's a reference yeah. to Fortune as um, as the being of the changes in people's situations, and we are at her mercy at all times. And we're in a kind of Kraken. And so there's Ship of Fools, and, and the moment is the Kraken, and you'll notice in the in the video it's getting away. So there, we, I am using in a very Tyson Yonkaporta sense, metaphor to build this spell, right? And maybe, and, and, and the language of time has to be in it somewhere. And are people, people are kind of vibing on how do we do that? Like, is, is, a, is time travel, not to make it gimmicky, like get in my, get in my clunky 19th century um, time machine, right? Which make amazing classic TV to watch. But uh, is there a way of, playing with time travel as an idea beyond it is, we're being kind of like haunted in this moment by the consequences and inertia of our actions so um i don't know what, what do you think like i actually don't know until we do it but like what do you think yeah so this is uh that, that this will this will uh this will result in me looking at a bunch of like editorial fashion things and also the the functionality of uh of of throughout like throughout we'll say like the last 300 years of the the costume for a rider um and just things like just think like the uh, the, du- the duchess of cambridge and, <laughs> and uh, helena warren paris uh, tory pals uh this is yeah there is there is a there is a there is a through line and i think the through line is the thing we're looking for here it's not this or that it's not steampunk it's not no. um it's not it's not tardises it's not ch- not that i don't love these well but i love steampunk but no uh it's not um it's not gimmicky but there is a through line and i think i think there, the the design element uh is something and so again this again this is just gonna be a really fun week for me just yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. looking at a hundred million fashion illustrations uh couture like that kick that kind of thing and then just looking at the the history of like dressage and stuff like that there is there, there and i guarantee you because let's be real the 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 through light of those two worlds uh, of like you know high fashion and, couture, uh, and dressage is money so there is there is that there is that tory through line of like the upper classes mm-hmm. uh and there is that kind of bounding um arrogance of the rider i think yes uh that yeah there it's, is this there is this there is a character i want that to come through too like uh the rider knows he she is cute so um the, it is that kind oh, of absolutely. and we all hate ourselves for it but we do find that appealing in that kind yeah. of cute tory right we hate ourselves for it but when they're oh, rich yeah. and they know they're hot <laughs> yeah. um yeah <laughs> are you just you, you know you're gonna pay for it in the end you know eventually 
there will be there will come a time and there will come a place where you will have to pay for that but you can't help yourself <laughs> oh, yeah 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 so i mean that's the which is maybe even worth a rewatch um but that's the way, by the way that's that, my favorite sorry uh, my favorite uh in the old world of twitter was like never fuck a tory uh, like the gays the gays of twitter <laughs> high gays of twitter um never fuck a tory and i was like first of all how rude that you would expect me to ask exactly the, what kind the of political leanings of of what kind of, of apps you know, are you on yeah. <laughs> come on i'm not marrying these losers for fuck's sake like <laughs> jesus uh yeah but that just right yeah never fuck a tory but well you know you don't you never let them fuck you that's what you don't do <laughs> there you go so um some interesting ideas coming back to a time and where you can find theme and and and, and flavor whatever is cloud atlas so there's a there's a um, uh, one of my favorite movies, if not my favorite, has the sense of different times being in relation to each other, which is a very animus position, right? Um, Jason said, which is kind of cool, like no more modern beyond the actual lifetime of Madame Lenormand herself. Now, that's a really interesting creative restriction uh, and there might be something in it, uh, especially if we're if we can't settle on how we can get like a Jean-Paul Gaultier, Cloud Atlas, Neverwhere, Helena Bonham yeah. Carter in the Cotswold time travel thing going, because <laughs> that's quite an interesting brief. Uh, that, that's if we can't boy. land on that, I actually, I think reverting to the idea, because she did die mid-1800. Do you remember off the top of your head? 1840s? Lenormand? Yeah. 1846. It was like, there was like a hundred direct, 100 years of... Uh, related to like my sort of that. I think it's 18, 1836 or 1846 or something like that. Yeah, cool. So that's actually not a, necessarily a bad idea because we can kind of point to the logic and it does give, uh, it does allow her to be necromantically present too, which is interesting. So it, it may be something like that. I am interested in, in having um, the eeriness of time present in, in the deck. So, so we'll see what happens. Maybe it's something as... Maybe it's like a dream. So maybe it's like in a time period you can't quite place. Because obviously there's not going to be yeah. an automobile card. But if you look at it... Um, oh, did you vanish? Yeah, there you go. No, I'm here. But my, so I am going to have to ad hoc this for a sec because my battery is... Oh, very good. I'll talk amongst, I'll talk amongst cool. myself. <laughs> okay, hold on. Guys, bear with. This is, this is going to get ropey fast. Uh, <laughs> Um, and is your, uh, like, maybe you should have mentioned this before we got an hour into it. Is your mic actually plugged in? Because I feel like it sounds like you're just on the iPad rather than on your mic. Uh, it was until just this very second. Uh, Interesting. The volume was down low, so maybe that's what the issue is. No, that's the, head, that's the headphone volume. Uh, yeah, it was. It was plugged in. Uh, just a sec, guys. Talk amongst yourselves. No, that's good. Um, what I will do is, what we can do, you can take a couple of minutes if you want. One of the things we're going to do for um, every card, and unfortunately you guys didn't know that who are on the, in the chat because, like, this is the first card, is I, um, I want to find a music match uh, because one of the few cool things about me that people don't know until I start talking about it on Q and A's or whatever is 500 years ago when I first left university, I worked for Virgin records and I actually kind of, and then time out in London and whatever. So I have, um, I long had an interest in music. My grandmother was an opera singer and, and so on. So I've been trying to find a music match um, for the cards and I have found one. Did I send you um, Queen of Broken Hearts by Black Bear when we were talking about it before Colin? Do you remember? No, I, I believe I was waiting. I was, uh, I was uh, hoping to be surprised by it. Well, as we yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, that's interesting. He's he, he's from Atlanta originally and is mostly known as a songwriter. Um, but the the song itself has, um, it, it's it's like a he's a he's recently he's a young father. So he's in his early thirties. He's kind of skinny and tattered. Um, heterosexual so it's like a, a a heterosexual father in his early 30s serving you megan trainer energy um oh so the song like this the song's called queen of broken hearts and he says it's about social media but i will play it 
uh, for people in the chat. I'll, we'll see if this works. And I think it, and it'll give you a couple of minutes to think about if you have a song that matches the twink um, or the writer for you. Um, but I'm going to see if it'll, this is the first time we've run a video through the thing. So uh, let's see. Yeah, you know, like the heartbreak, I like the, like the, there is elements of that in there, yeah. which I liked. Um, absolutely. So yeah, that's, and that is, uh, so again, social media, if it's a, if it's a song about the, you know. The, well, that's what he said. The, I, I honestly think, he, I honestly think he's like accidentally, like, I think he just walked into Megan Trainor's unconscious one night, like. And a onesie. Yeah. She can't the yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, because he says it's about social media and you can actually find him interviewed going like, this is what I think it's about. But there's just something really hot about that. Um, it's, it's like a straight male voice singing Megan Trainer has that um, hot, dangerous darkness of the twink card. So that's the sort of energy. Right. <laughs> I like it, I like it, I like it. My choice was uh, just run, running through the playlist of my mate, of my, like, my Spotify or whatever was Little Nas X and it was Old 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 Town Road, uh, just because it is All right. that kind of, uh, that writer, that dark, handsome, but like twinkish, yeah. uh, that dick, that energy. No, that's uh, good. And also there's the, there's a the swagger and there's like the, the it's a different, um, it's a different aesthetic, uh, but there's, uh, there's that kind of, you know, look at me go, like that's the kind of, that's the kind of that's the kind of energy which I enjoy or which I enjoy for the writer anyway. Yeah, awesome, awesome. So, um, what else do we need to say about it? Do you need anything else you uh, reckon? Uh, um, obviously, in the in the uh, the Telegram chat, we'll be sharing. You will be sharing because I um, when when I say I can't draw, I especially can't draw horses. <laughs> Yeah. No one no one on this planet should be able to draw horses. It's something that you just learn to do very quickly. <laughs> so don't worry about that. That is not a skill that anyone is born with. Uh yeah, guys, flood the flood the telegram. Um follow me on Instagram. Uh I'll be posting everywhere to do like with the sketches, with the ideas. I'm looking at it, I'm listening to it. Everything is interesting, everything is useful. Every opinion, uh, I don't know that every opinion counts, but it is. They're all real, like this is, we, we come to it from like Vine Deloria, um, who was a, an amazing indigenous activist in the US. He says no data are irrelevant. And that's how yes. it is. Like, don't, don't, just share everything. Like uh, in the Telegram chat, it may not get used. It doesn't matter. Contributions build the field of, of sharing and relationality. Uh, yeah. So I share it yeah. creates the it creates the flow of what we're doing Absolutely. and that's what i find to be very interesting about this project so go for it guys gals and girls fucking do it like let's have at it nice one and again any ideas over the course of the week dump them in the chat we're in there most days and what's interesting is we're diff like because it's late night for you and, and morning for me we kind of have 24-hour coverage of the chat really <laughs> which is good <laughs> yeah as, yeah that's now that, now that i'm in, in the in the zone for it and we've started with the card one uh, I'm going to be in there just uh, needling, needling and noodling about, um, waiting, waiting with uh, bated breath. And that's all, all we can really say for that. <laughs> well, there's some really cool uh, music suggestions. Highway Unicorn's not a bad one. Um, anything by Sophie, although she will, trust me, she comes up later in the deck. Um, some good, yeah, I know, Rip. Anyway. <laughs> Um. <laughs> cool. All yeah, right. She, guys. Listen, she died the best way you could die. Uh, Trying to look at the fucking moon. Iconic. <laughs> yeah. Iconic. All right. Um, well, guys, really, really useful stuff again in the chats. And um, always a pre pleasure, Colin. And and we'll find you in in Telegram. Have a good one, yes, everyone. Good day. Good morning. And goodbye. <laughs>